So, uh, a little bar. I'd like to introduce everybody to the Grumpy Snail. So this is the bar that I built in my basement. Um, it's mostly finished, probably 98% finished. Uh, uh, mostly the only thing left is fine trim work and just uh, decorations and making it uh, look the way that I would want the bar to look. And so, uh, so I'll give you a tour and I'll also show you how I made this right here in my basement. So if you look at this uh, old footage from uh, my short film, The Judge, you can tell here in this video that the, the area where I put the bar in, you know, was all open. The whole basement was open. So I had to put a wall in right there and separate those two rooms and make them into two rooms where the one left side was a bar and the right side, of course, was my new studio, which I'll have a video on that as well. So the main body of the bar was made from uh, used wood pellets that I got from work. Uh, we probably ended up using, I don't know, somewhere around eight pallets. Uh, it was mostly, we used them for the main frame of the bar. We also used them to make the, the frame of the back sink. And uh, we also used them just to, just to cut them out and, and put the planks up on the wall. What you doing? I was trying to... Uh... Remove some of the, I guess that's your old paint and your uh, and your old wall right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to get some of it off the front. Yeah. I'm, I'm, we're gonna make a bar. What are we doing? Oh, uh, we're gonna make a bar. <laughs> As an example, 90 degree mm -hmm. blocks on the back of the post that are gonna support the shelves. I think I should do those on both ends so they can also tie into the post so I need to make a couple of 90s. Okay. That's a T. Now it's a T. Now it's a couple of 90s. Now it's an L. Now it's a T. Now it's an R. Put the bar top on. Well, I don't know. Hold on. I gotta check my tool bag for. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Beat that, mother pigeon eater. Hey, so we're at it again. About to make another uh, run to the home improvement warehouse, where we will be picking up some building materials and do some browsing with uh, the work we're about to get into today. So, uh, stay tuned. So, we're working on this thing right here. If you haven't figured it out, that is a cabinet space slash countertop area. And uh, right now what we're working on are these doors that are going to go 
over top these open shelf spaces. So a good portion of the construction in there is being done with uh, used pallet wood. And uh, the doors that we're making will be no different. We'll be using pallet wood. Here's our first door, our first cabinet door that we screwed together. So yeah, so now I just gotta make three more doors. So we've got our, uh, our pallet boards here. And what we're gonna do figure out uh, which side we want to be the front and the back of each board which this this will probably be the back of this one do that we line them up put two rows of screws across this cross that like that and that's our door Because this pallet wood likes to split. Just screwing these in with some leftover drywall screws. You getting a good angle back there? You look like George Clooney. Here at John Snyder Builders, we require lots of ear protection for For just in case you don't cut all the way through. This is electrical wire. Look how good that looks. Yep. Almost there. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> oh, you got a brace for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Feels nice. <laughs> ah! No. Uh, you can all admit that John's cabinets look way better than Laura, though. So go ahead and leave them in the comments. Uh, or uh, hit that bell or subscribe just because John has uh, great cabinets. Or because I think I'm beautiful. So we're almost halfway done, or we're pretty much halfway Actually, done. Yeah, I would say halfway. I mean, this is a big step because this is, this is, uh, this is totally drinkable right now. What are you doing? Uh, well, I'm, I'm actually holding my old crotch. And uh, I'm wiping down the bar top so we can spray paint. So hopefully tonight, at some point, we can enjoy some beer on it. And then I'm gonna huff this What are these? These are actually <laughs> my suspenders <laughs> that I, uh, I use when I wear <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it, man. I'm like a beast. I go to the gym now and stuff. It's just so you've like grown six inches so far. Well, you know, <laughs> on a good day. Sometimes I like to wear an arrested performance. Oh, can't do it, can I? Or sometimes I could just pop up the bar and be like, brown chicken, brown cat. <laughs> 
So things are really starting to come together. All the wire's been ran. Um, most of the bar uh, top and the front and the back, everything is mostly done. On. So as you can see the back, we've got the countertop. It's just painted. It's painted on a flat black. Nothing special here. You can see it's a little dusty and needs wiped off. I've got this kind of decorative thing going on make it kind of look more like a uh, real stone if you're uh, interested in how to do this uh, pattern here or how to do uh, this technique or anything uh, that we're going to do with these countertops here check out stone coat countertop on uh, youtube and they'll tell you exactly how you do this uh, technique that we've tried out here on our bar top so this is a uh, this is our top the boards have all been stained and everything uh, the back wall has been painted and so have these two side walls over here <laughs> right now I'm working on the electric here in this uh, outlet box there and uh, also over here where our switch will go to our lights uh, I was going to test out my connections there and then realize that without this outlet in, it wasn't going to work. So that's what we're getting into today. That's what I'm getting into today. I'm also going to do a little painting with uh, this wall over here. I'm also going to do some painting this wall over here. Get all the electric up there. Test that out. I'm going to get the refrigerator plugged in. It's had a little uh, work done on it. So I've painted the, the refrigerator. It used to be white. I painted uh, the surfaces black, except for, of course, the accent pieces I kept white. Whirlpool logo I kept white. Everything else is painted black, except, of course, the inside I didn't paint it. I used uh, black uh, enamel uh, spray paint made for uh, home appliances, and uh, it turned out pretty decent, I think. I also painted this uh, pipe, this PVC pipe that's a drain that uh, will be exposed from the ceiling, but I painted it black so it would, it would look better. It would blend in with everything. So the, the walls that we got that you can see are a uh, fire dust color, kind of a, a light uh, beige orange sort of thing going on. I thought it would contrast well with the, the darkness that we have with the floor that's going to go in, and then of course the black countertops. And the black accents, we're going to paint all the trim black that goes in here. There's a spot over here that will also get painted the same as this. And I have to finish the wall there. I'll get that done today. The two walls here, the one behind the camera and the one over where the fridge is going, is going to get painted in a dark kind of uh, maroon type color. So we'll see how that turns out. That will get done today as well. got there this is the epoxy that's going on to the countertop do you have a specific brand you'd like to produce no. or mention this is the cheapest thing I could get on Amazon you guys hear that comes in a two-part epoxy so you mix them both together and these this is everything I'm using I've got the paint brushes for chopping it which I'll explain means later. I got this trowel I'm going to use to spread it out because uh, from what I've uh, researched the eighth by eighth of an inch spreads it out the best and most evenly. Uh, what else do I have? I have some white and espresso brown paint that I'm going to use. Let's see. Got some mica dust that I'm going to put in it. I think that's all I got down here. I also have this torch. You going to do some dabs? What? Like this dab? Is that what you're talking about? You should, buy, you should buy this wine. 
2013. 2013 is a great year. <laughs> Why don't you talk about the, the problems we had with the electricity? Uh, I had lots of problems with the electricity because the these light fixtures are purchased from China. So I'm guessing their electrical codes are different than they are here. But uh, every light had to be wired individually because the wire didn't carry enough amperage or voltage or what, whatever it is. So at this point, I had uh, already mixed the uh, two-part epoxy. The epoxy comes in uh, the epoxy part A and, uh, and a hardener part B. They recommend that you mix, uh, you mix them for about uh, two, five minutes or whatever. It's also recommended that you do it in uh, like room temperature, not, not really cold. And of course, when I did this, I wasn't doing it at room temperature. We were in the basement, so it's it was probably a good 60, 65 degrees. So it, it, it was a little bit more stiff than I would have liked it. It didn't, it didn't run as smooth as uh, uh, later mixes that I did. But after you mix it for, uh, for two minutes or so, and you make sure it's all nice and, and well incorporated, you just pour it out onto your countertop, and then uh, you move it around with this trowel, this, uh, this eighth inch by eighth inch grooved trowel that I have. Uh, like I mentioned before, that trowel seems to be the best to use to get a nice even uh, eighth inch coat of the epoxy. You just want to make sure that you move it around, you keep it nice and uh, perpendicular to the countertop so that you know you get an, an even coat across because if you lean the trowel then it won't be even across all the top and you also will get thinner spots than you want but the whole point here is just to move it around uh, it also helps with the mixing it just make sure the whole entire countertop gets covered so you make sure that the top gets covered then once you know it gets covered then you start moving it to the edges and start pulling it over the edge so that the epoxy rolls over top of the edge and gets you a nice epoxy coat around the edge of the countertop. So at this point I'm doing a process that's called chopping. So basically what you do is you just use a, a paintbrush, uh, preferably a large one if you're doing a large area of course. And uh, basically you in a rare random pattern tap the epoxy that you laid and what that does is it gets rid of your trowel marks so that there aren't any marks in your epoxy and it also gives you a more natural finish so that it's not as you know manufactured. You want to make sure you do it across all your whole entire countertop area and uh, again make sure it's random and that there's no visible pattern. You're also going to want to watch out for any uh, of the bristles that, that are falling off your brush because that will happen. Make sure you don't get any of that into your epoxy. At the end of doing the top of the countertop you will want to wipe around the edge to get a nice smooth surface to make sure that all your edges are covered with the epoxy around the edge of the countertop because if you have a textured front edge then just the epoxy rolling over top won't help it you'll need to you'll definitely need to wipe that down so now i'm using a blowtorch to eliminate the air bubbles when you do the process of chopping you're going to create a lot of air bubbles in, in the the epoxy layer and you want to get rid of those because you want a nice glass smooth surface so that torch really helps this process it, it causes all the air bubbles to pop you want to do a couple different passes you want to do one pass wait uh, five minutes or so and then do another pass wait another five minutes or so and then do another pass that again like I said it'll get rid of all the air bubbles and it'll give you a really nice smooth glass like finish so here you can see I'm now uh, I've gotten done the, the back counter and I poured the epoxy out on the, the actual bar top. And again, same process. Pour it out, trowel it out. Make sure everything's nice and even.
You'll chop it out with a brush. And then finally you use the uh, torch to get rid of all the air bubbles. So after that's cured for at least 24 hours after it's nice and hard and I believe after this point we waited about a week just just because with the way work is and everything uh, you'll sand the top of your countertop that you poured your epoxy that you poured you'll sand that with a, a fine a fine grit like a 220 and uh, if you're Jonathan Yates you'll freak out that now you're beautiful countertop is all scratched and destroyed but if you're like me you're smart and you know that it's not gonna look like that when you're done uh, the whole point of sanding it and of course after you sand it you want to wipe it down with a damp cloth to get up all the dust but the point of that is to uh, give a nice surface for your second coat of epoxy to adhere to your first coat of epoxy and so your top coat is your clear coat that you pour on it. Sometimes you'll do uh, multiple undercoats if you're doing different types of designs and, and things like that. But with what I was doing, I was just doing a flat. What I ended up doing was just a flat uh, black with the, du the mica dust in it and then a coat of clear epoxy on top. And the clear epoxy that you pour on top goes on just like the, the bottom coat. You'll pour it. Uh, or you'll mix it, you'll pour it, you'll trowel it out, you'll chop it, you'll torch it, and you'll have a nice, uh, clean countertop. All right, so right now I'm putting the, uh, putting the clear coat on top of the, the bar top. Um, I just got done uh, torching the top to get rid of the air bubbles. I'm going to give it another five minutes and I'm going to torch it again. Uh, right now I'm going to run around and get all the drips that are dripping off the side of there. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, make sure you go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel, make sure you like this video, make sure you share this video on all your media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and tune in next week where I'll be releasing another video. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, good night, Godspeed.